Hey, what's up, y'all? Coach Rock here from Revenge Basketball, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you five exercises that you can use starting today that can help you start jumping higher so that you can start grabbing rim, maybe even start throwing down your first dunk. So pay close attention because I'm going to be showing you these five exercises and explaining them to the best of my ability so that you can make sure that not only that you are doing them, but so that you are doing them right. That is the most important thing, especially when it comes to vertical jump. Because when we start talking about vertical jump, if you are not doing things properly, of course, it leads to injuries, it leads to just small pains, um, and it actually hurts your vertical jump. So be sure to focus on what I'm saying. And before you start doing these exercises, make sure that you are you know, fully healthy and make sure that you watch and listen to the explanations I give so that you make sure you do them properly. And then it's not even about getting injured, it's just that if you waste your time not doing them properly, you're not gonna see the best results that you could get. So don't just fly through the video and just quickly look at each exercise and say, oh, I know how to do it. Actually listen to the explanations so that you can fully implement them and do them correctly, all right? Because if you do, your vertical jump will explode, especially when you add these in to your training regimen properly. All right, and I'll tell you a little bit about how to do that as well in this video, so let's get straight into it. Now really quick, before I show you these five exercises, when it comes to implementing them, the first thing is don't do them every day. Do not do them every day. I would say do these in sets of maybe, you know, keep it, keep it small, keep it maybe like three to three sets of five reps or maybe three sets of four reps and do it maybe two to three times a week. And you usually want to do these either after you've warmed up. So maybe after you've played a little or before you lift weights. So if you're not playing, I would do a good dynamic warm up. Make sure you're very loose and then do these plyometric exercises and then get into your weight lifting, your strength training and you could get into basketball training. But if you have training on a basketball day, I would say do a dynamic warm up. Maybe play for a little, like just have a few, like a warm up game or two, maybe play for like 30 minutes and then get into these exercises. What I don't want you to do is spend two to three hours playing basketball and then do these exercises, you know, going very slow and not explosive because you're going to be tired. You want to be at full strength. You really want to before you do these, your workout should be primarily to get you warm and that's it, okay? So remember that when doing these, and again, two to three times a week, do not go overboard with these. Sometimes more isn't always better and this is the, that is a key fact when it comes to doing plyometrics to jump higher. The first exercise we are going to do is something called death drops, okay? Very simple, all you're doing, you don't even have to get on a box this high um, if you're just getting started for the very first time, you can use a smaller box. And if you're advanced, you could use a higher box. Usually you don't even need a higher box. So I would start, I don't know how high this box is, maybe like 16 inches. I would start something around here. All you're doing, you're stepping off here and dropping. Now, when you are dropping, a key here is to break at your hips and then your knees like this. Okay, this is gonna help, this is gonna teach you to land properly, one, but it's also helping you train your reactive muscles and the force that your body can take when you hit the ground. Because essentially when you jump higher, you're taking a lot of speed and you're putting that force through the ground and jumping straight up. So this helps you capture all that force and also teaches you how to land properly. This is a great way when you master landing, it'll really help you prevent a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries come from players not knowing how to land properly. So again, the key to this is as soon as you land, you are breaking at your hips and your knees. It should be like a machine kind of fold. It's like your body is folding. Cause if you drop with your knees straight from this high up, it's not gonna be good for your knees. All right. And you don't wanna build that as a habit. Every time you jump, you land straight up. You want to practice landing with your ankles dorsiflexed 
This will prevent ankle sprains. So when I say dorsiflex, I mean my ankle like this. And balancing on this probably isn't the smartest thing for you to do, so don't try this. But dorsiflexion is this, plantar flexion is this. So when I land, I want my toes pulled up. I, I wanna try to land on the balls of my feet and everything at the same time. So again, stepping off, all you're doing, you're not jumping off, you're stepping off. And that's it. Breaking at the hips, look how my hips have broke, look how my knees have gone. I don't feel any of this on my knees. I feel it all back here. And that's where you wanna feel it because your strongest muscles are on your posterior chain. So you have your hamstrings, your glutes. This is where all your power comes from even when you're jumping. It's all posterior chain. These are very strong muscles. You want these muscles absorbing that landing. You want these muscles absorbing the force you are taking into the ground when you jump and you wanna jump using these muscles. Again, your posterior chain, and then you have some of your hips that you are thrusting when you start jumping. So this trains your foundation before you even start jumping. This trains your body to be able to take these movements and use them efficiently. Now, the second exercise we are gonna get into is a variation of this same exercise, but now they're deaf jumps. Okay, so now you are jumping after you land. So you're not so worried about this time landing all the way. You wanna land, you wanna break at your hips a little, and then you wanna take that vertical. So you don't wanna stay on the ground too long, but you do wanna stay on the ground. And this is important, Ground time, time on the ground is important because this is what separates this exercise from the next exercise that I'm gonna show you. So what you're doing here, Use your arms, because we use our arms when we jump. Watch exactly what I'm doing. I'm landing, I'm breaking, same thing as the last landing, and then I'm quickly exploding up using my arms and jumping as high as I can, vertical, all right? So again, we're here. Now, did you notice how my arms went back as soon as I landed and then jumped up? Now, the thing I didn't do on that landing, because I was trying to talk as I landed, I didn't break properly upon my landing after jumping. So let's do it again. This time I won't talk so much. Get into the exercise. Now notice how I landed, the same exact landing I had when I did the death drop. So you see how all this is starting to tie together. It's very important that you do it properly. All right? So again, try to jump, absorb a little. Let me show you exactly how when I did the death drop, I just dropped. When I did the jump, I didn't drop all the way. It's like, a, it's like a spring. I didn't pull the spring all the way down. It's like quickly. So it's down, but I don't go all the way down. It's like I went down to here, and then I tried to explode up as fast as possible. So that's key. Now let's get into the next one. All right, so the next exercise we have is a drop jump. Now this is a little different than the death jump. First, most importantly, we start with a lower box. All right, we're not gonna do this with a high box and you're gonna see why. With this, when we land, we're not focusing on breaking. This one, we are staying tall and we are primarily staying on the balls of our feet and we wanna really work on our dorsiflexion here. You should feel this more around this area, not so much your posterior chain or your lower body but your, or your kind of middle body more down here, around your calves, your dorsiflexion, um, your dorsiflexion muscles, like around here. All that stuff is going to be activated in this drill right here. So again, very key, keep our ankles dorsiflexed. Again, that just means you're pulling your toes to the ceiling or pulling your toes towards yourself. That ensures that you are landing on the balls of your feet and jumping off the balls of your feet. So you are here. Same thing where you are stepping off, but instead of breaking here, all I'm doing is I'm not breaking. I'm trying to stay as tall as possible, and then I'm jumping immediately off of that. So this is not a drop. This is a drop jump. So we're here quickly, okay? You're popping up. See how I did that? It's more of a pop. It's more of like a pogo jump if you ever heard of pogo jumps. 
we're just going like this that's essentially what this is you're basically doing a pogo jump off of the drop so that's it very simple now a cool drill if i had more of these boxes would be to set up a row of them and be able to do them quickly like just drop boom jump step on the next one go step on the next one go but you don't always have that all you need is one box now of course if that box is too high for a death jump for you then probably don't even worry about drop jumps just start with your death jumps make sure your body can withstand that force and then you can start adding the drop jump all right the next exercise we're getting into is something called split squat jumps now if you don't know what a split squat is it's basically a squat where you would you put your leg up here and then you would just squat down so essentially you're going to be doing that kind of movement and honestly you could even that's an elevated split squat you could even just be stationary like this and just squat down here all right so a split squat jump is essentially the same movement but jumping so what you are doing here is you're really trying to use your hips you're, you're trying to go you're trying to really get that hip action there you want to work these hips also want to work your legs here use your arms and you are jumping land, upon landing you are splitting so let's get into it here 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 so you can see how my arms are they come back and they're up every time i jump when i land they're back up every time i jump again these are training all the muscles that we will be using for our vertical jump so very simple i would say do for those ones keep the reps short maybe like three sets of three to five reps for these you could do three sets of like 10. The next exercise we have is 180 jumps. So what you're gonna be doing here, taking this here, basic, you're just jumping, but as you jump, you are turning a 180. So when I do a 180, my back will be facing you. So here, and then I'm immediately jumping back, turning around. Again, note, focus on the arm swing. This is very important. Focus on the landing is very important and exploding up as fast as possible. So here, notice how I'm breaking here and jumping up. Notice how my hips jumping up. Let me do it from the side so you can kind of see how the side angle looks. Here, watch the arm swing, simple. I hope you found today's video helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up for me, comment below, let me know what else you need help with, anything you need, you know I got you. Last but not least, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I'll see you then.